Welcome everyone to this episode of Attack the Track. We are attacking the Nürburgring today. The Nürburgring features nine left-hand turns, six right-hand turns, and go up to three heavy braking zones, depending on whether you run the chicane or non-chicane version. It's a high downforce level track, and the chassis needs to be ready to be able to ride the high curbs. We're gonna have a look at an onboard qualification lap from the Virtual Endurance Championship first. The LMP2 car is a really, really rigid suspension car, so the overall chassis is really, really stiff, therefore got its issues riding the big curb. Nevertheless, the lap will be a good explanation as we go into turn one, you need to make sure to hit the apex and go through that hole in order to get the transition to get the traction. Turn two is a late apex turn before you go into three and four, whereas three and four both um, rely on each other to a certain extent as the exit of three defines the entry into four. Coming up to turn five and six, basically a long chicane, but uh, again, the exit of five will influence the entry of six Coming towards turn seven, a double apex hairpin at the bottom of the track up towards the Schumacher as a fast left right chicane. No overtaking there. Also following in dirty air sometimes is a bit of an issue. Before we come into 10 and 11, once again 10, you don't want to compromise the entry into 11 too much, so make sure that you compromise your turn 10 in order to be good and fast in turn 11. Now coming up to the fast chicane, so the Nürburgring version without the tight chicane. In the LMP2 you can take and should take as much curb as possible to optimize the lap time. This may be different with other cars though. We will go into detail of that right now because we're not only looking at a lap done in the LMP2 car but also with the Formula Sim Racing car. So once again, the chassis needs to be able to ride the high curbs and we are here on a high downforce level. So we're starting a lap in the Formula Sim Racing 2020 car, looking at the lap from an F1 point of view. And uh, the key location, turn one, it's the best overtaking spot by far. It has a downhill braking zone, which makes things interesting. And you need to nail the apex. Once again, the exit, will define the approach into turn two, and turn two is a late apex turn as indicated here with a little arrow in the track map. So let's have a look into turn one first. You want to be really at the apex. You see there is a little of, ho of a hole which you need to get the power down. So as soon as the compression kicks in, you should get the power down. So once again, the best overtaking spot, you do downhill braking and nailing the apex is so, so vital because if you nail the apex, you don't go too wide and the exit predefines the turn two approach. So we have a little look there into the slow-mo and um, we're turning in to turn one right to nail the apex here. And we're gonna stop the picture here for a short moment. And then I have highlighted the red area as being the hole where the compression comes into as soon as you go over there. So also where you can see that arrow, that's when you wanna pick up the throttle again as we are now touching the curb and then go and sort of drop down that hill. And I've indicated what happens to the suspension. So the area where to look at is highlighted. Right now the compression is decompressed, uh, the suspension is decompressed and now gets compressed. And that is the moment when you can get the maximum traction down because there's so much downforce, so much force on the rear axis pushing the car down for perfect traction. Then after a short acceleration sprint to turn two, you want to turn on late on the apex. I've, hit, I've hinted the apex with a yellow arrow there. And uh, then you come straight away, uh, straight immediately to key location three, four. Um, it's a single way combination where you need to sacrifice turn three for turn four. I've indicated this here. The red line is the line that is surely fastest because when you hit the green arrow, you can go and accelerate through turn four and take maximum speed out of four. However, if you are going out too wide from 
turn three with an orange line, you need a lift right there where the yellow arrow is and lose vital time on the exit. So we have a look on how this turn is taken. As you've seen, you're not on the very outside line because here is when you want to be on the very inside. And that's easiest to do if you kind of steer towards the turn first and then turn four is actually maximizing the exit speed. On to the sprint we go to turn five and six. Once again, don't go too wide on the T5 exit and uh, most importantly, stay on the inside curb and turn six and be patient with the acceleration. Because as you can see right now, we're not going too wide from the T5 exit. So we have a good entry into turn six. Sadly, I missed the turning point uh, just a little bit, but you've seen you need to be really, really patient in order to be fast there. Looking at turn seven, the Dunlop curve, it's a classic tight white tight line. You need to treat it like a double apex, 180 degree turn, and you need to make use of the banking of the corner. Once again, we look at this turn considerably fast. We're in the banking right now, tight, wide, tight again, and on the throttle considerably early. So again, the banking is between the both yellow lines and the green line, the green arrow was the location where it should be on the throttle again. So I'm highlighting this here once again, stopping the car. This is the gap between the inside tire and the curb. So the first apex, then you go a little wide and further decrease the speed. And then you start to accelerate again while the tires still look very much to the inside curb again. And then you take that yellow path that brings you back to the second apex. So already under quite amount of power, now kissing the second apex again and giving you the maximum momentum, the maximum acceleration out of turn seven. Uh, you can touch the curb here, then go up to the Schumacher S turn eight, nine, as late apex into turn nine, uh, into turn eight, as you want to straight line turn nine as much as you possibly can with the least amount of steering input. But more importantly, we need to look at turn 10 and 11. Once again, turn 10 sets up the entry for 11 and you need to have a late apex for uh, turn 11 to have a good speed out of that turn because the back straight is very important where you can really set up your car for an attack. And we're going to have a more closely look at this. So the exit is vital for the back straight speed and that's the preparation point for an attack in or in defense. So at the green arrow you really want to be on the throttle you really want to attack the straight already and as you've seen us right here we're also already into the turn and now this is the late apex where we just approach and kiss the inside curb i'll stop the picture here once again and then you need to be full power open the steering as early as possible just to let the car go and unlike the lmp2 car we saw before this FSR car is easily able to mount those curbs. So this is one of the spots where a rigid car makes issues. Then coming into the key location, turn 13, 14, we're looking at the fast chicane first. Nailing 13 is important for the lap time speed um, because you want to straight line as much as possible through this chicane. And here, the FSR car cannot handle the curbs, whereas the LMP2 car can handle it. Short word about the T13-14 location, you really want to be on the inside first. Um, so very tight on the inside curb and then maximize your way through the turn 14. Depending on the car, like a GT3 car can handle the, the high curb on turn 14. The FSR car would not be able to handle the anti-cut curb in turn 14. Then a short sprint up to turn 15. Um, late apex again for the exit speed and once again exit speed is super vital as you need to set up the car for attack or defend into turn one and I recommend a wide entry to begin your qualifying lap. We're going to have a look at this on um, fast speed of course so a little bit wide then come tight to the apex and then let the car go on the exit. I've highlighted this once again with a little drawing. Um, making sure that uh, you see the apex is quite in the later part of the circuit. Guys, that is Attack the Track of the Nürburgring. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, hope that you give it a like, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more of Attack the Tracks to come.